Where am I? Sick puppy, you better let me go right now. I'll have you know I'm a well respected member of the community with many friends who will no doubt be looking for me. Hold your horses. I know more about you than you know about yourself. And I know that you know that we both know that that's not true. Two bit. Two bit? What the hell are you talking about? My that's name is not your name! You are two bit Jesus! And this is what's going to happen next. You shall review this game. And when you're done with that, you're going to review another, and then another, and another and another until I'm satisfied. Then, if you're very lucky, I may kill you quickly. Now, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to get camera ready. This game will be reviewed. <sighs> What the fuck? All I can remember is reviewing Streets of Rage 3. When I went outside to collect some games, I was captured. Maybe they used a, a rag or something. Chloroform, maybe? Well, sounds to me like you finally caught on. Do you think games just fall from the sky? That was me. I know where you live. It was so easy to trick you. But now you're here, and you're gonna do what I say. Or else, stuff's gonna get real ugly. <sighs> I woke up here. How long have I been here? A few hours, maybe a few days? You're gonna be here for as long as it takes. And if you don't want me to bring your family into this, you're gonna do what I say. Now, review the game. <sighs> I'm just gonna have to play along for now until my friends can find me or I can find a way out. <sighs> Till then, I guess I'll have to review some games. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, a first and third person shooter that is also the third installment of the Dark Forces slash Jedi Knight series. Released March 26, 2002 for the PC, GameCube, and Xbox, Jedi Outcast was published by LucasArts, the PC version was developed by Raven Software, while the console versions were developed by Vicarious Visions. Before we jump into this review, let's take a look at some of the tidbits in Jedi Outcast's development. During the Electronic Entertainment Expo in 2001, LucasArts announced that Raven Software would be developing a third game in the Jedi Knight series. You know, I just want to say this one thing before we go any further. LucasArts during this era started to only push Star Wars games and the occasional Indiana Jones game. And sadly, they moved away from the great point-and-click games like Full Throttle, Monkey Island, Grim Fandango, and so on. I wonder what the production meeting must have looked like when Lucas made that decision. 
Okay, Mr. Lucas, here's how LucasArts has been doing. Point and click games are getting rave reviews. Grim Fandango just came out and everyone loved it. It's one of Wards. Full Throttle should definitely get a sequel, perhaps on the upcoming PS2. And of course, Monkey Island is still going strong. Yes. But I did just release an amazing film called Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Uh, we've all seen it, and we're all pretty much in agreement that it's the best film anyone's ever made. So, let's just stop making games that make the players think, and instead, make more Star Wars games. Honestly, we can just overload them with Star Wars. Star Wars after Star Wars after Star Wars. Each Star Wars game, a testament to to my genius and greatness. Uh, yeah, but, but but that doesn't make any sense, Mr. Lucas. Silence! 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 You know nothing. Isn't that right, Jar Jar? Misa agree, Mr. Big Boss Lucas, sir. Hate you must. The game uses the Quake 3 engine, and Raven also utilized their animation system from their previous title, Soldier of Fortune 2. LucasArts announced that Jedi Outcast would have multiplayer, but the game was too early in development to demonstrate it at that year's E3. To be honest, they actually had trouble getting the multiplayer running. That is until Rich Whitehouse, a programmer who was brought on to help with the development of the game's AI bots, moved on to tackle the entirety of the game's multiplayer mode hence why he is credited as the only multiplayer programmer. Now with these little tidbits out of the way, let's force jump into this review, shall we? The gameplay primarily revolves around gun and melee combat. You also have a wide variety of force powers to learn and level up. The game has both single player and multiplayer modes. Single player campaign is set in the Star Wars expanded universe two years after the events of the previous game, Mysteries of the Sith. The plot follows Kyle Katarn as he fights against the Dark Jedi Dasan and the Imperial Remnant. Jedi Outcast allows you to wield a variety of firearms from the Star Wars universe, as well as lightsabers and force powers. The game gives you the ability to use either first or third person perspective for each weapon. Though when using guns, the default perspective is first person, and when using the lightsaber, the default view is third person. The combat is standard for a first person shooter game, offering you an array of energy and projectile weapons, plus a variety of explosives. You have health and shield bars, each of which must be replenished separately when you take damage. For your health, you have back to tanks, and for the shield, you must find these little recharge stations strewn throughout the levels. The core gameplay of Jedi Knight remains, but you can definitely date Jedi Outcast as a post-Halo Combat Evolved title, as to me, it's obvious the development team were inspired by some of the mechanics and concepts from Halo in Jedi Outcast. Jedi Outcast places a strong emphasis on lightsaber combat. The game offers three lightsaber styles, with each style differing from the others in attributes like speed and damage dealt. There are also combos which are unique to each selected style as well. Force powers such as push, jump, and lightning are available in both single player and multiplayer modes. Force powers are restricted by your force power bar which empties with each use, but refills over time. Like Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast has RPG elements allowing you to level up force powers, increasing their abilities and duration. The multiplayer mode divides players into light side and dark side in team battles. Each side has access to basic force powers. Powers unique to the light side are mainly focused around protection and healing, while dark side powers are aggressive and offensive based. Unlike Jedi Knight, Kyle does not exclusively select light or dark powers in the story mode, instead receiving a selection of both. All this comes together in a mostly smooth experience. My main critique is that while the lightsaber mechanics are great, you can tell the development team neglected the gunplay as it feels a bit dated and remained mostly unchanged from Jedi Knight, which was released over a half decade prior to Jedi Outcast's release. That said, the gun mechanics in Jedi Knight were solid for its time, but First-person shooters had evolved a lot by that point, and Jedi Outcast should have reflected that more in its gun mechanics. Though with awesome lightsaber gameplay, you don't really want, nor do you really need a trusted blaster at your side, kid. So in summation, gameplay gets 3 bits out of 4.
If there's one thing LucasArts is good at delivering, it's a solid soundtrack, and you get all the classic John Williams music, plus some original tracks to give the game its own character. And speaking of characters, the voice acting is actually pretty decent. There are a lot of flat deliveries in the line, but honestly, I think that's more due to placement by the development team than the voice actors themselves. Jedi Outcast Sound gets an above average 3 bits out of 4. Clean glass. Of course, sirs. Jedi Outcast is a good looking game, but has its flaws. The facial animations are very awkward in some spots. I mean, very awkward. Just look at this. Does that look natural? No, it doesn't. Freaking weird and demonic. Well, besides that, Jedi Outcast delivers the Star Wars universe in a beautiful and immersive experience. While not as detailed as today's Star Wars games, next to Knights of the Old Republic and Battlefront 2, Jedi Outcast was the closest you could get visually to the movies than any other Star Wars game at that time. The level design I feel is fair. The levels are expansive and diverse with cramped areas and big open areas to fight in. It feels very linear in spots with not much call for exploring though. Even with this linear setup, the game does a very poor job of telling you where you need to go and what you need to do. There are a lot of areas that will stump you and have you wandering around for a few minutes or hours trying to figure out what the hell do you do here. And I feel that that is just poor, poor game development there. They should have put a little bit extra time into maybe, I don't know, having a hint system or, or just having some NPC remind you of what you need to do and where you need to go. It just wasn't there in this game. Maybe I'm just an idiot. The story mode is set eight years after Return of the Jedi and around two years after the events of Mysteries of the Sith, the previous title in the series. As stated earlier, you play Kyle Katarn, a former Jedi who has cut off his link to the Force after succumbing to the dark side in the previous game. At the start of the game, Kyle is a mercenary for hire working for the New Republic. Over the course of the game, Kyle is joined by various other characters Three of the most prominent are his loyal companion Janowers, a fellow mercenary and subsequent love interest, Mr. Charm himself, Lando Calrissian, and Luke Skywalker, Grand Jedi Master and leader of the Jedi Academy. The player also receives help from other Jedi and New Republic soldiers throughout the game, while Mon Motha, the New Republic's leader, assigns Kyle and Jan missions during the game. Kyle's antagonist is Dasan, a former student of the Jedi Academy. He killed a fellow student before leaving the Order. Other sub-bosses are Tavion, Dasan's apprentice, Gallic Fayar, a general in the Imperial Remnant, and Relo Baruch, a crime lord posing as a respectable garbage man. Other enemies include Imperial Stormtroopers, numerous space thugs, and soldiers infused with the Force known as Reborn. The game begins with Kyle and Jan investigating a supposedly abandoned Imperial outpost on Kajim. However, when they arrive, they find the base is crawling with Imperial forces. They fight their way through the base, discovering a research center studying crystals that are used to power lightsabers. After discovering the crystal's origins, Kyle and Jan travel to a mining colony taken over by the Imperial Remnant, where people have been enslaved and experimented upon. Katarn sabotages their operations. On his way out, though, Jan is captured by Dasan and Tavion. Kyle tries to rescue her, but is easily defeated by Dasan, who then orders Tavion to kill Jan before they leave the planet. With Jan dead, Kyle then travels to the Valley of the Jedi, which was a very important plot point in Jedi Knight. It's a place with a lot of dead Jedi spirits floating around, and pretty much you can use it to empower yourself with the Force. Kyle uses this to regain his Force powers, and then he makes his way to the Jedi Academy to get his lightsaber. There he learns of Dasan's origins from Luke Skywalker. Luke offers Kyle his lightsaber back, but Luke also warns Kyle about the anger he feels over Jan's death, saying the path he is walking is a dangerous one, but he nevertheless gives Kyle information leaking Dasan to Relo Baruk, a Rodian crime lord on Nar Shadda. Which if you think about it, this is strange and very out of character for Luke Skywalker we've seen on film and read in comic books and all that. It's like he's essentially saying, hey guy who turned to the dark side a few years ago, yeah, I see you, and I see you're being tempted by the dark side again. But you know what? What the hell? Here's your lightsaber back and my blessing, and also telling you where to go find the guy that you want to murder. Because, you know, the player needs to kill things with their saber. 
Kyle bumps into Lando while chasing down Baruch. Lando informs Kyle that Dasan is part of a huge operation smuggling Cortosis, a lightsaber-resistant material, through Cloud City. Because, you know, we need an excuse to go see an iconic location from the films. After escaping Baruch, Kyle and Lando head for Bespin. Kyle has his first encounter with a Reborn here. As discussed earlier, they are Imperial soldiers infused with the Force. Think of them as Dark Acolytes. Not really Sith or Dark Jedi, kind of a little under that. You eventually encounter Tavion in Bespin. Kyle defeats Tavion in battle and then threatens to kill her, but Tavion pleads for her life telling Kyle that Jan is alive and on board the Doomgiver, which is Dasan's flagship. Jan's fake death was just a ploy to trick Kyle into going to the Valley of the Jedi so Dasan could follow him there and tap its power. Kyle makes his way to the installation that the Doomgiver is docked. Kyle meets up with Luke here. From Luke, Kyle learns that Dasan found the Valley of the Jedi and used the energy to empower an army of Reborn. After battling several Reborn, they part ways. Kyle confronts more Reborn, including Shadow Troopers. These are Reborn equipped with armor, which is both lightsaber resistant and can cloak. They remind me a little bit of the elites from Halo that could cloak themselves. Kyle manages to sneak aboard the Doomgiver, but is separated from Luke in the process. Kyle then sets out to sabotage the ship. He finds Jan in the detention block, but learns that Dasan was not specifically interested in the Valley of the Jedi. Instead, his goal all along was to invade the Jedi Academy on Yavin 4. Kyle destroys the Doomgiver's shield reactor and kills Gallic Fyar, who has created a mech-like suit that is lightsaber resistant. This is a boss battle that is a nice throwback to the original Dark Force's final boss battle. I really liked it, it was a nice touch. Now, after escaping the ship's destruction, Kyle and Jan land on Yavin 4. Kyle heads to the Jedi Academy while Jan goes to the hangar to assist the aerial battle. Not before we get an awkward kissing scene that was rife during the sixth generation of gaming. Ugh, what were they thinking? That, that, that's not how kissing works. What? What's wrong with these people? Kyle finds the Academy overrun with remnant forces, but with the help of New Republic troopers, he fights his way into the Academy. There, together with Jedi students, Kyle battles against Reborn warriors and shadowed troopers. Kyle finally confronts Dasan here. He reveals the Doomgiver's destruction and the defeat of the Remnant forces, but Dasan rejects Kyle's offer of surrender and the final battle begins. Of course, after you beat this final boss, it shows Kyle prevailing and killing Dasan, and then reuniting with Luke and Jan. They share a brief exposition about the events of the game and Kyle's future in the Jedi Order. Kyle politely rejects Luke's offer to safeguard his lightsaber, saying he's not ready to forsake the Force again, leaving the door wide open for a sequel. Presentation is probably the weakest link in this game, having decent to bland level design and those awkward looking almost demonic facial animations in a story that is trying to be an epic Star Wars tale, but it falls short. And why it falls short is because mainly the antagonist. Dasan isn't very interesting as a villain. He seems very cunning at first, manipulating Kyle to reveal the Valley of the Jedi, only to use its power to help him attack the Jedi Academy. He comes across petty more than a big bad villain, at the end of it all, I was left mildly disappointed. Luckily, the gameplay was great and compensated a lot for the stale plot. So in summation, Jedi Outcast's presentation gets a passing grade of 2 bits out of 4. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast isn't as good as I remember it being. Once I took off the nostalgia glasses, I kind of finally saw all the flaws that it had. That being said though, I still think it's a solid game, especially when you consider its unparalleled lightsaber battle mechanics. My final verdict for Jedi Outcast is a must own and play for the casual and hardcore collector of the Xbox, GameCube, and PC. The console versions run a little bit higher than the PC. The Xbox is around $10 online, while the GameCube is around $20. I got the PC version on Steam for around five bucks. That's it for this review guys, as always, stay safe, What's that sound? <coughs> What's that smell? Is that gas? <coughs> Look, I'm gonna level with you guys. I'm trapped here against my will. I have no idea where I'm at. But if anyone sees this, please alert the authorities. I need your help.
C call the fire marshal, the police, or the National Guard. Don't call the president. He's, he's an idiot child. But everyone else, please, call them. <sighs> Shit, what am I gonna do? <sighs> Maybe he left the door unlocked. It's worth a shot. Did you think it would be that easy? I was just gonna let you walk out on me again? No! No! It's not how it's gonna go down. You're gonna be here for a while. As always, stay safe and play on. <laughs>